Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And make sure your mind stays with the breath. If it wanders off, you bring it back. Wanders off again, bring it back again. You have to be on top of it. I focus the mind like this. Not so much to get the breath, but to get the mind. But first you pay attention to the breath as a way of giving yourself an anchor. And then when your mind is here, then you can watch it. As John Chai used to say, when you watch your mind, you watch it lying to itself. It wants happiness, but then it goes ahead and does things that are going to cause suffering. That was the Buddha's great insight, which was that the suffering that really weighs down the mind doesn't come from outside, it comes from inside. And the happiness that will lift up the mind doesn't come from outside, it comes from inside. It all depends on what you're doing. We live in this world. We see good things and bad things, hear good things and bad things. Why do we hear bad things? Because we have ears. Why do we see good things? Because we have, because we have ears and eyes. So it's not so much the things outside that are the problems, it's the fact that we take things in then and make big issues out of them. So we have to learn how to look at the mind to see where it creates issues that it doesn't have to create, and then let them go. So we train the mind. Once the mind is trained, it's like having an animal in your house. The animal is well trained, it can actually do tricks and it can do things for you. Some animals you can actually put to work. You benefit and then they benefit as well. If the animal hasn't been trained, then it just makes a mess all over the place. So train the mind well. We train it with virtue, we train it with generosity, we train it with meditation. We train it with generosity so that we realize that we don't get so much happiness out of getting things as we do out of giving things. The knowledge that we've shared something with somebody else, that we're able to rise up above our, of our desires, our, our greed, is refreshing to the mind. Same with the precepts. When you hold to the precepts, you're rising up above the kind of behavior that would cause harm to yourself, harm to others. That's refreshing to the mind. And especially when you meditate, you get your thoughts under control. So you think the thoughts you want to think, and you don't have to think the thoughts you don't want to think. And you get a better idea of what th thoughts are really worth thinking to begin with. All this comes from training the mind in generosity, virtue, meditation. Of these three, of course, meditation is the hardest skill to master, but it also is the one that goes deepest. So it's good to give it time every day. Watch over your mind every day. Watch over your mind all the time. Give it a good place to stay with the breath. And learn how to get it more tame. Tame, not in the sense of just being docile and unambitious. You want the mind to be ambitious, but tame in the sense of realizing that whatever happiness you want in the world, you want a happiness that doesn't cause any harm. And then you train the mind in that direction so it's alert, mindful, ardent in finding that happiness. That's when you can put away the sufferings that the mind causes itself and you find all the happiness that the mind can bring to itself. And you find that that happiness is more than enough. <laughs>